So, Paul. Yeah. When, when we're building websites and tools, we, we want things to be fast. We want the page to load quickly. We want the user to have a, a good experience, yeah. to, to be happy when they use our site. But somewhere along the process when we're building our app, things start to get slower and slower, and I don't really realize it right away. But then all of a sudden, I reach this point, and I'm like, oh, my, my app is slow. Yeah. And then, I mean, you're like, you got two problems. You've got poor performance, and now you've got the challenge of actually having to try and fix it. And like, from measuring correctly to understanding enough about the internals to make a, you know, an educated guess to actually trying that out and, and doing something, like, it's not easy. Like, it's, this, this path is, is hard. This yeah. performance is hard. So um, I'm Paul. I'm Sam. Uh, we, we're really into performance. Like, we're performance geeks, I guess. Geeks? Um, yeah, geeks. I don't know. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Performance yeah. nerds, you like that better? OK, anyway. Yeah, um, we're going to tell you about some uh, tools, techniques, um, approaches, and workflows on uh, making measurable and effective improvements in performance. There's some, some fresh tools. Fresh tools. Fresh. Of course, fresh tools. Fresh tools. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, before we get into some of the real world uh, products, I want to kind of step back a little bit. You could think of performance as the art of avoiding work and making sure that any work that you do is as efficient as possible. Th th those are some sage words, Paul. They are sage, sage words. Sage. So nice. Paul Lewis. Paul Lewis, actually, for this one. Was oh. Real okay. good stuff. It's good. Yeah. Um, so I want to touch on kind of like the effective workflow for diagnosing and understanding performance. Um, so it all starts with the user. The user is the most important thing. You've got to consider where are they beginning and what is success to them. That is kind of your bounds for investigation. So I sort of like uh, put myself in that user headspace. Yeah, you could like get like in the head, like right up in the between the headspace. Like his glasses and where his head is. Effectively. Like, okay, you, you could do that, yeah, if you want. I'm in the headspace. I Good. got it. Great. I I'm appreciate that. Um, after that point, next thing is to measure. Measure with the profiler. Get an understanding of what sort of time we're looking at. This is key. And you, you say that, like measure, but like meters, yards? Uh, <laughs> milliseconds. S nanoseconds? Sam, I'm doing a slide. Okay. okay. Uh, after this, you interpret costs. You understand, kind of like categorize, characterize the sort of work that is happening. Understand it. After this, identify the bottleneck. Drill into like what is actually happening. You might use a specialized tool for this. Um, drill in, and at that point, you can try a fix. You have a hunch, give it a shot, and do and it. For me, it's like I just I have a hunch. I sort of guess. Just change something, refresh, ah, change I mean, it again. Yeah. You wouldn't want to I mean, like that's my trying. You right? wouldn't want to go like directly from measure to like try a fix. You don't want to like skip the rest of that. But yeah. And we always end up and we're like, that looks like it might work, and that's fine. But then the key thing here is that you've got to return back to measuring again. Um, you, you take that exact same thing that we were looking at before, you measure it, you understand what sort of change, what is the delta of the change that we actually made. So, OK, so I found this function that takes 10 milliseconds to run. I'm like, oh, I can go JS perf crazy on this and drop it down to one millisecond. That's like, right. this is awesome. But then I look at my total time to run, and it's two seconds. Yeah, 2,000 milliseconds, and we made a nine millis like 2,000 milliseconds down to 1,991. I mean, it's something. Something. But, uh, but oh, wait, right, because I'm in that, that user headspace yes. behind the glasses. I'm like, oh, I can't even notice that. So it doesn't matter. You what? It doesn't matter. Well, I mean, to the user, it doesn't matter, those nine milliseconds. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, what is going to be most effective for them? All right. So with that out of the way, let's get into some real stuff. Um, and I think we're going to start out with the site um, Android Auto Yeah. website. Cool. All right, let's dive into it. All right, so uh, I was looking at this site the other day uh, on my phone, and I loaded it. They were just like reloaded the page? Yeah, just Command R. And I saw that uh, when the page loads in, I sort of see this spinner, and then this green thing pops up, and I see a header. 
Yeah, if you could like, um, uh, yeah, describe what is happening right here in kind of poem form for me. <laughs> the green fields flow in. The spinner, no, OK, fuck. Uh, so, so <laughs> yeah, so we got this like situation. We got the top coming in, we got the bottom, we got this thing in the middle. Um, uh, and we're just waiting for the spinner, right? Yeah, and I'm like, as a user, I'm like, I can't really touch this. I shouldn't touch this because it's spinning, it's loading. Yeah. I'm just going to wait for it. Sure. OK, so yeah. I like figured that, OK, there's probably like a big image that's downloading, and it's just taking a really long time. And so I'm waiting for that, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's look at the timeline. OK. Um, so I have this timeline recording that I did when I reload the page. And we can scrub over this. And we sort of see that initially we get this header painting in pretty much right away. Um, and then we see our, our spinner. Actually, Sam, uh, there's like a lot happening here. Yeah. Can you just, can you just like briefly tell me what all Sh is going on? Sure. So here's like our JavaScript that's going on, uh, our main thread activity. Good. Um, then here's like we see our frames per second in the green, and then the red is like frames that took a while to paint. Like it. OK, but we'll just ignore most of that for now. Sure. So we're just going to go back. talking about the screenshots. Yeah, just, just this film strip. Seems good. So here's that green field that you mentioned. It just sort of fades. Uh, yeah, that's right. It's poetic. I see why you wanted that's it. That's nice. See our spinner, and then. Spinner. Uh, then we get our Ooh. image. OK. Um, and, you know, that's like. Uh, so how long were we spinning? That's, see, um, so we're going to hold. Like three seconds shift. almost. Hold shift, shift right? Key. Drag, and we get to see how long that took. Yeah, a good three-ish, almost three seconds. Three seconds of spinner. Spinning. This must be loading something big. I imagine, this is my guess, uh, the header image, this uh, shot with the car is like like two megs or something. Sure. Like I forgot to compress it. Yeah, it's just huge. All right. But like, OK, so, but I'm not, I don't know that yet. So I want to guess. To guess. OK. So what if do I do now? Wanted to figure out. What I recommend to you is there is a checkbox at the top of the screen now. Uh, network. Uh, network. Uh huh. Box. Good. Uh, Promising. Do it. Do it. Whoa. All right. <clears throat> okay. So I see I have more in this crazy view. Uh huh. Uh huh. Let's check this out. So basically, here we have the exact same network waterfall that you might see over in the network panel, um, but now integrated into this view. Huh. So the colors are pretty much uh, images are generally green, um, uh, style sheets are purple, script is yellow, kind of matching the colors of the rest of the flame chart. Um, but the nice thing here is we can begin to kind of coordinate what is happening on the network side of things and then the actual like, execution of what's happening on the main thread. OK, so we, we know that the image loads in around here. So um, right, let, me find that, let me find that image. Uh, scroll to the bottom. Um, the one megabyte image. So you're saying that like nothing on the network is happening between here and nothing here? Nothing on the network is happening. We have two seconds of just nothing. Yeah. Well, what? OK. Let's look at the last thing to load. Sure. OK. Uh, last thing? Click that. Yeah, we can bring up the bottom see. and see kind of a preview. OK, so that's an... that one. There was the other one. Yeah. Too, though. Uh, let's see what this. Oh, yeah. Oh, there it is. OK. There we go. All yeah. right. There's our, there's our image. So that's our image. It finished right here. Yeah, but then it didn't actually show up for 1.5 seconds. Okay. Okay. Not sure. Yeah, that seems strange. So, I guess at this point, we're—I mean, we're a bit confused in this situation, right? Yeah, I don't know what's happening. We didn't build this site, unfortunately, um, and it's not every day. <laughs> it's not every day that you're like performing, like profiling a site that you didn't have a part, a hand in. Um, so we had to do a little bit of digging in order to like digging. find what the story is with this image. Yeah. Okay. So let's hop to. Um, so like, like let's look at the image. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like I just hit Command Shift C, or you can like use this. We yep. So grab the element, and here's our our banner image. Yeah. Can you zoom in just a touch? Yeah. All right. Check this out. Um, see this data breakpoints. Yeah, I see this. I bet you can some kind of like um, responsive images. JavaScript oh, right, like kind media query thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so they don't load the two megabyte image on your phone. Right. So they're probably using JavaScript to start that request, which is why it happened a little bit later okay. on the page. Um, they could be using source set, like, or you know, they could be using a platform feature for. Uh, but they use JavaScript. Something. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Um, but now we no need to understand. 
what the connection is to the loading, the spinner? Yeah, like some JavaScript is, is doing something, right? Yes. I bet you, your bottom dollar, that if you, uh, one of these classes here, okay. JS header animate image. Sure. If I were to look at anything in particular, it would be that. All right, so I, I see it, I have it. Now what do I do? All right, go up to the, uh, actually, use the new command menu. Uh, command shift P. Nice, that's nice. Ooh, that's hit, <laughs> hit search, <laughs> uh, or type search. Yeah, yeah, we got a few things in here. So this is just going to search across all kind of the capabilities of the dev tools, uh, just, you know, and uh, key, key, keystrokes. We kick that up. It's just going to bring up the search across all files that we have. And uh, yeah, yeah, let's search. OK, cool. Uh, we have two results. Two one results. In, looks like the page. One in our and document and one in some JavaScript. Dig in. Let's, let's check out what's going on in this JavaScript. OK, so it looks like the code's minified. Hit so the button. Let's pretty print that. There we go. There we go. <laughs> All right, good. All right, so we got this JS header animate image. It looks like it's assigned to this. Yeah. Uh, Let's just hunt down kind of what happens here. Bink. Oh, uh, OK. So we're in this function load content? Yeah. All right. So to be honest, I'm going to break a little bit here. Uh, we have done this before. It's not totally a surprise to us. We have investigated this. There's a good amount of code here. And since Sam has understood what it does now, he's now going to explain to you what he has learned. OK. Uh, so, so we look at this, and we see we have a set interval here. So that every certain duration, we're going to fire a function. Yep. And then I see this 1e3. 1e3. So I said, Paul, what does this mean? Because I know you, you got like a math major or something. Yeah, yeah. It is called exponential notation. OK, and I did not believe him. So I copied that. And I, uh, let's see, we go into our console here and we just sort of paste it. Oh, it's a thousand. Thousand. Well, that is a fancy way to write a thousand. Thousand? <laughs> we have a set interval for every thousand milliseconds. Yeah, so every thousand seconds. And what are we doing? And then we're checking to see if this header image has a class of loaded. Every second we just pull to be like, hey, you loaded? Nope. Hey, you loaded yet? N nope. Hey, you. Yep. OK. Good. So <laughs> then we're loaded, and then what? OK. Uh, then we're using this tween library, which is you know, doing some A little bit of transitioning. Well, fancy. Um, and I saw we have a delay and this opacity. Um, the delay, uh, one millisecond? Yeah, I thought that too. And then I looked at the docs. Uh, that's a second. <clears throat> we're polling once a second to see if it's loaded. Yep. Then it's loaded, and then we're like, OK, great. I'm glad that you finished downloading. Uh, um, I f I'm glad that we have identified that you're loading. Now, before I fade you in, I'm just going to just like pause and just hang out for just, a little just, bit. Just hang out for a second. For a second. Just, just chillax, wait, and then we'll fade it in. Yeah. That's fascinating. That is good. My dad once told me, um, he gave me some good advice for my career. He said, uh, whenever there's kind of problems, issues, um, a good way to kind of rephrase the situation is instead of using negative words, you can say there's a lot of, uh, there's opportunities. And so I think we could all agree that there are some opportunities in this area where we could, you know, try some things. Potentially we could improve this. Yeah, I think that there's, there's some things. OK, so this, this accounts for why we have that, that gap. That big gap, yeah. Like that two-second gap of nothing happening. Yeah. So um, yeah, I think that uh, kind of many of us could, could identify a better way of handling this. Uh, not so bad. Before we move on, we've looked at kind of the load aspect of this page. But I want to touch on kind of a little bit of the interaction stuff. Sure. All right, check this out. If I come back to timeline, I want to clear this out. Uh, uh, and I want to look at kind of some of the scrolling performance, the interactions, kind of like once I start using the page, right? Yeah, it makes sense. Good. Scroll down to the bottom. Yeah, some of this stuff. It doesn't feel so bad like where I am right now. No, no, no. In fact, um, yeah, OK, yeah. So what I'm going to do is just capture a new recording. Um, I'll just turn that guy off and this guy. Oh, there we go. Cool. And record. And I'll just kind of like scroll, fling it. And I'm going to sign up for the mailing list, because why not? YOLO. <laughs> Good. Good reference. Um, all right, check this out. But what we have here, um, some new stuff. So 
along the top, uh, right here, if I scroll in, always mouse wheel. Mouse wheel is the trick. Um, we have just identified kind of what interactions are actually happening. Yeah, I see the words there. Like yeah, scroll, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Fling. So yeah, nice. exactly. Fling. So like scroll, I have like my finger down. I'm moving it. Fling, I let go, and it's just kind of gliding. Flinging. Um, and we can even go over here. Like this actually here is the response. You've heard us like we've talked about rail right. uh, measuring response. And so this is actually when my when I clicked on the sign up link and saw that. So we can open up the main thread again and kind of see this is all the JavaScript that was running. And if I zoom back in, I can open up and see some of the detail on this guy. And so check this out. So this is the actual like gestures that the browser is handling kind of under the hood um, in order to, to uh, handle this, this input. So What's that, like that red line? Oh, OK. So the red line. The red line, if we actually bring this up here, it says time waiting for main thread. So what happens is basically the uh, browser receives the tap, right? And then it's like, uh, cool, but like I just need a second because I might be busy and I have to um, have a moment. And then I'm going to totally like evaluate this on the main thread and run like kind of the event handlers to to handle that. So it's it's kind of like, hey, I just tapped you, but this is crazy. Uh, so to execute your event handlers on the main thread, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's like that, pretty much. Can we, we can rename that, right? Yeah, we could just put that whole, whole like, description right here. Yeah, it makes more sense. Abs yes, sure. OK, good. So the other nice thing here is that um, to kind of bring it back to what we were looking at before with the, the network activity, I hit that sign up form. We kind of waited, and then it's like, oh, yeah, cool. You're all set. If I bring back network. Uh, the nice situation is we can also see um, a little bit of uh, what is happening. So um, here you can see it on the minimap. You can kind of see these, uh, the blue bar right here is actually, uh, well, it's kind of yeah, the mini view of the network. Um, and we can always open up uh, to see some of the details of all of that. So it's nice to kind of get the interaction between main thread, network activity, and back um, kind of into a single view. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Seems good. Um, Next one? Yeah, Android Auto. All right. All right. Uh, this site, um, you introduced this to me. Tell me about the story, what we're going to look at. Yeah, my friend Tracy sent me a message. And he said, uh, hey, I think my site is kind of slow. And I loaded it on my phone. I was like, yeah, it seems kind of slow. Uh, can you take a look? I said, sure. So we're going to take it. a look. Yep, yep, yep. All right, so I have it loaded here. Um, and Who's that guy? It's me. Who's that guy in the picture? It's me. Oh, that's cool. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, normal looking web page, right? Like, I don't know. It's, yeah, it's uh, like a kind of bloggy content. Blog, yeah. videos, some podcasts. Some stuff. Pretty so normal. What do you want to look at? Well, let's just reload this page real quick. And I'm going to have the timeline go here. Yep. I just want to like, show you how it feels. Should we just hit Command R? Command R. And just like, capture the page. So it's loading. Cool. Still notice the spinner going. Still, yeah, yeah it's still loading. Up there. Okay. Something's so happening. I think it finished. Okay. And this is again. This is on my laptop. Yeah. Like with good Wi-Fi. Yeah. So it took like uh, a little over ten seconds to load. Ten seconds. Yeah, yeah. About that. For for all of the the stuff to finish. Yeah. But though, if we look at like kind of what's happening here, we roll that out. It looks like this image finally came in right around here, like eight and a half. Eight seconds, sure, and then some other stuff. Now, but like when I look at this, I see this crazy amount of yellow, and I don't understand what's going on. Yeah, like and there's like, a lot of uh, pastel colors. What on, is happening? On the chart. So I'm just like, what? Yeah, yeah. Actually, the the different colors, it's colored by file, so each file gets a different color. Oh. So then kind of get a sense like this is this file, this is this file. Okay, so there's a lot of files operating a lot. That's of correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I look at this and I say, OK, I, I, there's a lot of JavaScript that I could dive in and look at each function, but that would take a while. So I kind of want to group. Yeah, you probably somehow. wouldn't want to like, just like, start looking at this 20 millisecond slice. So we want to get kind of an aggregate view. Um, if you wanted to kind of see that, try this. Okay. Hit the, uh, on, on the bottom, sure. uh, bottom up right down there. 
OK. Yeah. So what we have here is this is basically a summary of all of the costs of, uh, of that ran on the main thread. Um, and this is across everything. So you might be familiar, say, for instance, if we kind of flip this off and go over to, to no group in it whatsoever. Um, if you use the profiles panel and done kind of like a typical JavaScript profile, you'll see like the bottom up view, and these are the JavaScript functions, et cetera, right? Uh, what we have over here, well, one thing when you do that, at the very top, you always see program in parentheses. Right. And you're like, I don't know what that is, but it seems to be taking a lot of time, right? So that is actually revealed all here. So, so this tells me that we're executing a lot of JavaScript. Yeah, we're executing JavaScript. We are doing garbage collection. We're doing layout and recalc style and parsing style sheets, all these things in addition to just running JavaScript functions. So there's a lot. So um, yeah, a good amount of work, all sorts of things. So this is a bit higher level I mean, than, than a, diving in. A good amount. Yeah. A good amount. OK, sure. Um, but yeah, you uh, switch that, that drop down back to a uh, group by domain. Because okay. in this way, we can kind of just see like by file, by domain, where our costs are. Good on a site like this, where there's like files coming in from different places. Right, so, so we have this uh, YT, uh, which is YouTube, right? Yep, YT image is YouTube. And then we're spending almost two seconds in add this code. Yep, um, yep. And we also got like Chrome extensions on here too, which is right. nice because sometimes you want to actually see how much, like what effect Chrome extensions that you have installed affect your page. Yeah. That's a little handy. But yeah, these seems add this in YouTube seem like a little high. Like me. I get YouTube because these players, they have to construct each player and OK. Yeah. Um, but the add this is weird to me. Um, and I was playing around with the site, and I saw that there's a button over here where you can click on the podcast, and you get this little add this widget behind a button. Uh, wait, wait. The, the add this cost that's like two seconds, it's for like the share buttons that are kind of behind this click. Yeah, so it's a feature that's behind a click that you know, probably most users won't use. All right, OK. But two seconds. <laughs> All right. All right, well, that's something. Um, well, so Tracy wanted you to, to dig into this, so what do we do next? Uh, so what if we were to just disable the whole like, podcast stuff and just see w what it feels like? It'd be good to just identify. We want to kind of like reduce down and identify our key bottlenecks. And so yeah, like, it'd be good to take it out of the picture. Um, so if we wanted to do that, what we could do is there's an experimental feature called request blocking, where we can just say, like, just block these requests from going out completely. Oh, that sounds perfect. All right. So I'm guessing we'd go to network. Network panel. And then look for pods. OK, so this seems to be the URL yep. for these players. So you can right click and block request domain. And it's just going to kind of, okay. yeah, so uh, have, the browser is going to not uh, be able to issue these requests. So, so should we reload um, and capture the new thing? Yeah, let's do that. I see that number jumped up to 13 here, so it's probably working. Yeah, exactly. Um, another thing that I will point out on, on our way over is we're doing this right now on our laptop. Um, and the experience on a phone, like this is a responsive site. Like we'll, it's the exact same thing that runs on a phone. It'll probably take a little bit longer than this. Like a little bit means a, a lot of bit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so there's another uh, new experimental feature um, that we can check out, and it's uh, CPU throttling. So just like network throttling before, where we slow down things, now we can actually slow down how much time everything from JavaScript to layout takes to evaluate um, inside the page. Oh, so I don't need to like plug in my phone to sort of experience what it's like on a phone? It'll slow it down, and that's useful. You should, if you care about performance, still plug in your phone. But this will give you a nice um, uh, push in the right direction. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. All right, so we go back to our, our, our bottom up group by domain. Yeah, so we, we blocked and, all those requests. And add this, we like removed this. We did remove this. <laughs> I like the joke. Nice. I, 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 I worked on it. It's growing on me. I like that. All right. Um, what are we at as far as like time, time and all this? Uh, so we dropped down to like seven seconds now. For the, like, until main thread is kind of. Yeah, until chill. main thread's idle and. I'm going to guess that things were ready before. Well, it's not bad. It's All right, bad. good. Um, but we're still, kinda... paying, we're still paying this YouTube cost. Right? Yes, the YouTube cost is a little bit interesting. Um, and I think, uh, what is the, how is the embed done? 
right here? There's just uh, the iframes. Iframe, iframe, iframe. This typical iframe embed. Right. Uh, huh. Yeah, but like putting myself in that user headspace, uh, I was thinking as a user, I typically want to interact with the first video first. Yeah. And maybe not the last one right when the page loads. Yes. So what if we were to throttle the instantiation of these and sort of like lazily load them using something like Intersection Observer? Like when they entered the screen, we could build them and defer the work. I love all of that. You should do that. OK. <laughs> Turns out I did. All right. Good, good. Very uh, good. So you want to show us? Yeah, I have it running locally with the patch. So you just got uh, like this. It was yeah, a private host. GitHub, and you just like cloned it. Yeah. You made a patch. It wasn't that, wasn't that big. No, it's really small, actually. Uh, I think it's just here. It's just like, uh, I mean, this is a total hack, but we like loop over all these videos, and we just build the player objects. And yeah, yeah. It. Do a little, you know what you could have done instead of this set timeout in 150? You do a little 15E2. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, real classy. That would have been cooler. That would have been cooler. <laughs> all right. So that's easy enough. Um, yeah, let's uh, measure and yeah, check let's it out. do a little timeline. Okay. Do, do, do. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, it seems better already. It does seem cut off. I don't, I don't know what's up with that yeah. cut off bit. But like based on this, it looks like uh, our page, like that when that first frame gets painted in yeah, there. Yeah, just like from the top overview, it looks completely different here. OK, and like, it's sort of hard to keep this in your head to look before and after. So we made some yeah. pictures. Um, so before it looked like this, like we were really doing a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of work. A lot of work. 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 Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Um, Doing some, and then afterwards we dropped it down. And the nice thing here is, so there's the aspect of the fact that there's doing less work, um, and that's important. But we're also, like, at the same time as evaluating how much work we're doing, we're also looking at kind of how uh, visually available is the page. Right. Yeah. And it's like kind of a combination of things, right? Because if there's too much work, then uh, you. Like as a user, you're not going to be able to like scroll, interact with it immediately because like we're busy, you know, waiting for the main thread to call me, right? So, uh, so here we chunked it, we we brought it down, and so yeah, it, not bad. We went from nine seconds to that paint when you, a user could think that they could interact with it. To yep, four seconds. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad at all. All right, so uh, Sam and I, uh, we like web, web stuff. We like doing these, these websites. Uh, like many uh, JavaScript people in the room, we also do a lot of uh, JavaScript work on the server side, Node. Um, we've been building some uh, projects recently, and uh, we like to use tools to make sure that like, the code quality is really good. Um, one of our favorite tools is ESLint. ESLint's um, good. Make yes. sure the code looks the same everywhere. I love it because we were fighting about like we were fighting about line lengths and and two quotes spaces, and, two tabs. Yes, yes, it's nice to put that all to rest. Um, but we run ESLint sometimes, and we're running on our project, which is not like crazy huge. No, it's like a couple hundred files. And it felt like it was um, not going kind of the speed that we wanted. Like it was seven seconds actually timed it. Yeah. Seven seconds. So um, we wanted to like this happens to us, and because we are kind of performance geeks, uh, you. Geeks. Uh, yeah. Geeks. You like can't help sometimes. You're like, I was doing something, but I gotta go figure out what's up with the performance. Well, you were texting me at like 1 a.m. You're like, Sam, Sam I, I, why is it so slow? I, I, I think I think it, maybe no, that wasn't it. I'm gonna uh, so um, well, we're gonna show you. We're gonna try and you know look at this together. Um, but I do have to like put out a little um, disclaimer. Wait, did they announce this yet? So I need you guys to keep, we're going to show you, if you can keep a secret. <laughs> we're officially announcing this thing like tomorrow, but you get a little bit of sneak preview today if you're quiet. <laughs> so we're going to show it? So yeah, yeah. Basically, okay. we wanted to take the kind of uh, the developer tools and the, and the profiling experience in these tools that we know from the client side and be able to use them in this, uh, this back-end experience with Node.js. So we're going to go check that out right now. Yeah, it's good. <sighs> All right. So, so, so I have our project here. Uh, yeah, this is, yeah, this is ours. And I just, wanna, I just want you to experience this lint. Hook it up. You ready? Hook it up. Running, right? 
Yeah, it's running. Yeah. That's good. That's good. <laughs> I, won this, I won the staring contest right there. You did. I just couldn't that's take all it. I did. I couldn't take it. All right, we're, we finished. That's, took a little bit. That's a little bit. I feel, yeah, anyways, yeah. It took some, it took some time there. It's just. Yeah. So this is, let's, uh, let's actually measure it with a profile. Yeah, it was a little bit faster. Let's measure it with a profiler to see what's really going on. All right. So I'm using uh, my node binary, and I'm passing two flags, inspect and debug break, which is going to pause us on the first line of the program. And I'm just running our lint. Yep. So, OK. I get a URL here. So I can open that in Chrome. I have it open already. We'll just reload this page so we connect to our node. So what we have here is um, the Chrome DevTools, uh, modern Chrome DevTools. Inside of Chrome. <laughs> Inside of Chrome. And we're just talking directly to Node.js. Like, yeah, so this is my node program, or this is ESLint. Yeah, yeah. Notice like no elements tab, whatever, like we don't need that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I like it. <laughs> we've got a job to do. We've got we to gotta figure out what's we're going on here. Profile this. Let's profile it. Okay. So I'm going to go over to the Profiles tab, and I'm just going to record this CPU profile. And as soon as I record the CPU profile, as soon as you hit start, yeah, it's going to unbreakpoint. Yep. It's just going to run our program. Yep. So let's let's watch for when our program exits, so we can stop our profile, and we'll go ahead. Cool. Okay. You know that if you you can use Command E to start and stop these as well, if you don't want to click. Little pro tip. <laughs> Done. Okay. Let's take a look. OK. Ooh, look at that flame chart. That is a great flame chart. All right, some good colors on here. Um, but that, that's a, a lot of work again, 12 seconds of work. 12 seconds, yeah, yeah, wow. OK, so interesting. All right, if we want to like just characterize the shape of this, like at the end over here, we got kind of, um, uh, I don't know, we got this green land, green, green kind of world and process text, and we're parsing probably the... Um, like the files, like we're looking at well, what's going on in the Like files. we're actually like interpreting them and... and yeah, and linting. The, linting. The linting. Yeah, like yeah. the stuff. OK, so we zoom way out. Good. Uh, and I see this other group here, glob sync. Glob sync, big group. Glob sync. What are, what's glob? Uh, I, I think it's what gets all the files. It says, give me all the files in the project. Pass them down. Got it. Lint them. Just give me the files. Give me the files. Hook it up. But like, right. this is, you know, this is six seconds. There's a lot. What's happening like at the bottom of this? Like what is what is the actual stuff that is taking time? Okay. Zoom way in. Zoom a bit in. All right. It looks like we're doing like a reader and reader and globstar. Right. Let's click in. Just click? Yeah, sh sure. Yeah. Wait. Seems good. Is this my? This is the source code. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's your. It's the ESLint source, and we're just like gonna view it now, from the profiles. Yeah. Oh, that's we're pretty good. cool. It's nice to have that in Node. Yeah, that's good. Now, I I think I don't spend as much time in DevTools as you, but I, these colors in the side look new. These are. What is this? Ah, uh, yeah. This is brand new. Uh, this is uh, line level annotations of all of the performance uh, work. So basically. Um, if you're over and you're taking kind of like a JavaScript profile and kind of you see all this stuff, um, the self time is the amount of time that you actually spend doing work inside of that function, those specific things, right? Um, so if we take those numbers and we actually say, hey, I want to know, I want to see what that looks like against my source code. Um, and so like glob sync, right? And I'm just going to like click in and see actually what is happening there. Um, but not only like per function, but at, at the line level as well. So we're able to see between functions and lines where I'm spending time on the CPU doing work. Oh, so it's kind of like um, the perf, uh, perf gutter. It's like, it's like we put the performance work in the gutter of the editor. It's like a perf gutter. It's like a perf gutter? Perf gutter. Perf, oh, like an, yeah, it's like a perf gutter. Perf gutter. I like that. <laughs> we can call it that, right? It's a thing. OK, I named it. I.O. 2016, perf, perf gutter. gutter. We're doing the work here. We're doing the, work. the perf gutter. And actually, in the other files that we have, like, Seems like know, the numbers are smaller, right? So like, all the work is happening 
um, in here, like in the kind of globbing, we're moving around the file yeah. system. Um, Paul Lewis once said that performance is the art of avoiding work, and I feel like that is some work that we can avoid, right? Yeah. Do you have any ideas like, on like how we could, you know? Uh, well, let's let's zoom way out here. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And sort of look what's going on, and we see that it all kind of starts in this list files to process function. Mm, yeah. Stops down into this anonymous function. So let's click in again and see just like what's happening. Um, and this is this is a lot of code. Yeah. Too it much. Took took me a while to read it. And yeah. So you you made me some like. Artisanal, handcrafted, yeah. Paul Irish Sam's graphics. Sam's going to explain what's going on here again uh, with the help of my graphics. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay. Um, mm. Okay. So this is what's happening in that function block. We call ESLint, which is going to lint our code. It calls glob.sync on our project, and gets all 26,000 files of JavaScript, which include you know, node modules and all yeah, the node modules. stuff. Yeah, third-party stuff. And then it passes each one of those files into this filter which it reads in our ESLint ignore to know what to not pass on, like node modules. And then at the very end, we get 30 files. Yeah. And it's like, lint these 30 yeah, files. It does it, yeah. OK. So that's something. That's, that's cool. That's one way to do uh, it. That's uh, fine. And uh, is there any way to improve it? Well, I was looking at the glob options, because like doing the filter ourselves seems like too much work. Yeah. And glob takes an ignore. Ooh. Like, you can like give a, a blacklist of what should be ignored to the glob function. Yeah, so it's like, hey, should I even look at the node modules folder? And it just doesn't. It doesn't. Oh, that seems like a like a good approach. Yeah, it does. So, ideally, uh, it might look like this. We we call ESLint. It reads in our ESLint ignore. Yep. Constructs this filter object. It passes that to our glob.sync. Yeah. And we get. 30 files. Yeah. And the nice thing here is that like, we were looking at all that self-time, doing the traversal and stuff. And now we're like, it, it's like, node modules? Nope. I'm going to skip that like, big bunch of files and like, stick to the project. OK. So I, uh, well, that seems good. Um, let's like, try it out yeah. and measure it yes. and see. So I have a branch where I've actually made this patch already. Um, I like it. OK, here we go. So let's rerun our profile and see what kind of impact this had. Run it. So back to that measure step, right? Let's measure in again. So here we are in the source. Pause. Let's start our profile. You know you can hit Command-D. <laughs> <laughs> OK, we're finished. Wait, 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 what? Yeah, we're done. Wow, OK, cool. Yeah, I still see that like green area where it's doing the linting at the end, and then that that bit before where uh, yeah, but, that but bit like, before it, but there's uh, no glob anymore. I mean, I think it's in here. Like, I think it's there. Oh, there it is. There it is. Oh wait, that's uh, nice. 144 nice. milliseconds now. That's good. And so before we were looking at well, like we were like it's like 11 seconds in total for that, yeah. that run. That's pretty good. All right, cool. So. Um, uh, for our project, we'll make we'll like just hack the uh, thing. Just yeah, I can email you the patch. Okay, I'll apply it. Maybe we should contribute it back to the community. Hmm. I have to open a pull request. It's the right thing to do. Um, I have to like uh, take pictures and attach them and write words and like choose at least four emojis. There's some work there. Uh, <laughs> I know we're busy with this, but like maybe later. You could do it. Okay, I, I'm. I'm just gonna say that I, I started. I started oh, doing it. Oh, good. Okay. Well, uh, like sooner the better. All right. You want to do it now? Yeah. Do it now? Yeah. We'll just, All right. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Oh. All right, Rad. All right. So note the the unicorn emoji. Always the unicorn emoji. Those are good. Smart stuff. <laughs> Not bad. So. Interview, Paul, what, what, do we, what do we learn today? Yeah. What, what do we go over? A good amount. From being able to coordinate between what's happening in the network activity and the main thread, understanding, categorizing the kind of work that's happening, understanding f the interactions that, you're that the browser is receiving and coordinating that with my work, and then being able to take all that kind of performance stuff and then actually be able to use the same kind of stuff in Node.js. It's some, pretty awesome. Some good stuff. Some good stuff. Um, so yeah, so we're uh, really excited about some of this stuff. Happy for you guys to, to start using it. Let us know what you think. Um, 
some good things. If you have any questions, you can find us on the internet. Um, that works. Yeah, cool. Thank you guys very much. Appreciate it. Thank you.